Welcome to Pips AI and the This Week in AI special. In November 6, 2023, OpenAI had their very first developer event, OpenAI Dev Day. This is a summary of the latest groundbreaking announcements by OpenAI. First, we got to see OpenAI's metrics. We've got about 2 million developers building on our API for a wide variety of use cases, doing amazing stuff. Over 92% of Fortune 500 companies building on our products. And we have about 100 million weekly active users now on ChatGPT. Now let's get to the new announcements. Six things are improved from GPT-4. One, context. Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. Two, Two, more control. We have a new feature called JSON mode, which ensures that the model will respond with valid JSON. We're also introducing a new feature called reproducible outputs. You can pass a seed parameter and it'll make the model return consistent outputs. Three, real world knowledge. So we're launching retrieval in the platform. You can bring knowledge from outside documents or databases into whatever you're building. GPT-4 Turbo has knowledge about the world up to April of 2023, and we will continue to improve that over time. Four, new modalities. Number four, Dolly 3, GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, and the new text-to-speech model are all going into the API today. Five, custom models. We're launching a new program called Custom Models. With custom models, our researchers will work closely with the company to help them make a great custom model. This includes modifying every step of the model training process. Six, higher rate limits. We're doubling the tokens per minute and you'll be able to request changes to further rate limits and quotas directly in your API account settings. Second announcement, copyright shield. Copyright shield means that we will step in and defend our customers and pay the costs incurred if you face legal claims around copyright infringement. And this applies both to ChatGPT Enterprise and the API. Third, pricing changes. And GPT-4 Turbo, a better model, is considerably cheaper than GPT-4 by a factor of 3x for prompt tokens and 2x for completion tokens starting today. So the new pricing is 1 cent per 1,000 prompt tokens and 3 cents per 1,000 completion tokens. We're also decreasing the cost of GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. Also, input tokens are 3x less and output tokens are 2x less, which means that GPT 3.5 16K is now cheaper than the previous GPT 3.5 4K model. Running a fine-tuned GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K version is also cheaper than the old fine-tuned 4K version. Fourth, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella shows up. How is Microsoft thinking about the partnership? We love you guys. <laughs> It's been fantastic for us. In fact, I remember the first time I think you reached out and said, hey, do you have some Azure credits? We've come a long way from there. Five, ChatGPT improvements. ChatGPT now uses GPT-4 Turbo. It can now browse the web when it needs to, write and run code, analyze data, take and generate images, and much more. You will not have to click around the drop-down menu. All of this will just work together. ChatGPT, ChatGPT will just know what to use and when you need it. Six, GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. You can build a GPT, a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything, with instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions, and then you can publish it for others to use. And because they combine instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions, they can be more helpful to you. They can work better in many contexts, and they can give you better control. They'll make it easier for you to accomplish all sorts of tasks or just have more fun, and you'll be able to use them right within ChatGPT. You can, in effect, program a GPT with language just by talking to it. It's easy to customize the behavior so that it fits what you want, this makes building them very accessible and it gives agency to everyone. So we're going to show you what GPTs are, how to use them, how to build them, and then we're going to talk about how they'll be distributed and discovered. Canva has built a GPT that lets you start designing by describing what you want in natural language. If you say, make a poster for dev, a dev date reception this afternoon, this evening, and you give it some details, it'll generate a few options to start with. We've evolved our plugins to be custom actions for GPTs. You can keep chatting with this to see different iterations, and when you see one you like, you can click through to Canva for the full design experience. Let's see Zapier's demo of GPT. GPTs. So to start, where your GPT will live is on this upper left corner. I'm going to start with clicking on the Zapier AI actions. And on the right hand side, you can see that's my calendar for today. I can ask what's on my schedule for today. We build GPTs with security in mind. So before it performs any action or share data, it will ask for your permission. So right here, I'm going to say allow. GPT is designed to take in your instructions, make the decision on which capability to call to perform that action, and then execute that for you. It's already connected to my calendar, pulls into my, my information. I've also prompted it to identify conflicts on my calendar. It actually was able to identify that. So it looks like I have something coming up. So what if I want to let Sam know that I have to leave early? So right here, I say, let Sam know. I gotta go. With that, I'm gonna swap to my conversation with Sam, and then I'm gonna say, yes, please run that. Sam, did you get that? I did. So you can also build GPTs with natural language. Sam demonstrates this. 
So I want to create a GPT uh, that helps give founders and developers advice when starting new projects. I'm going to go to create a GPT here, and this drops me into the GPT builder. I worked with founders for years at YC, and still, whenever I meet developers, the questions I get are always about how do I you know, think about a business idea? Can you give me some advice? I'm going to see if I can build a GPT to help with that. So to start, GPT builder asks me what I want to make. And I'm going to say, I want to help startup founders think through their business ideas and get advice after the founder has gotten some advice, uh, grill them <laughs> on why they are not growing faster. So to start off, I just tell the GPT a little bit about, about what I want here. And it's going to go off and start thinking about that. And it's going to write some detailed instructions for the GPT. It's also going to, let's see, ask me about a name. How do I feel about Startup Mentor? That's good. So if I didn't like the name, of course, I could call it something else. But it's you know going to try to have this conversation with me and, and start there. And you can see here on right in the preview mode that it's already starting to fill out the GPT, where it says what it does. It has some like ideas of additional questions that I could ask. You know what, I actually, so it just generated a candidate. Of course I could regenerate that or change it, but I sort of like that. So I will say, that's great. And you see now that the GPT is being built out a little bit more as we go. Now, what I want this to do, um, how it can interact with users, I could talk about style here, but what I'm gonna say is I am going to upload transcripts of some lectures about startups I have given. Please give advice based off of those. It's going to go figure out how to do that. And I would like to show you the configure tab. So you can see some of the things that were built out here as we were going. And you can see that there's capabilities here that I can enable. Um, I could add custom actions. These are all fine to leave. Um, I'm going to upload a file. Uh, so here is a lecture that I picked that I used to, that I gave with some startup advice. Um, and I'm going to add that here. In terms of these questions, uh, this is a dumb one. The rest of those are reasonable uh, and like very much things founders often ask. Um, I'm going to add one more thing to the instructions here, which is be concise and constructive with feedback. All right. So again, if we had more time, I'd show you a bunch of other things. But this is, uh, this is like a decent start. And now uh, we can try it out over on this preview tab. So I will say, um, what's a common question? What are three things to look? F what are three things to look for when hiring employees at an early stage startup? Now it's going to look at that document I uploaded. Um, it'll also have, of course, all of the background knowledge of GPT-4. That's pretty good. Those are three things that I definitely have said many times. Um, now we could go on, and it would start following the other instructions and you know grill me on why I'm not growing faster. But in the interest of time, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to publish this only to me for now. I can work on it later, I can add more content, I can add a few actions that I think would be useful, um, and then I can share it publicly. So that's what it looks like to create a GPT. You can make private GPTs, like I just did. Or you can share your creations publicly with a link for anyone to use. Or if you're on ChatGPT Enterprise, you can make GPTs just for your company. And later this month, we're going to launch the GPT store. You can list a GPT there, and we'll be able to feature the best and the most popular GPTs. We're going to pay people who build the most useful and the most used GPTs a portion of our revenue. We're excited to foster a vibrant ecosystem with the GPT store. Just from what we've been building ourselves over the weekend, we're confident there's going to be a lot of great stuff. We're excited to share more information soon. Seven Assistance API. Many of you have already been building agent-like experiences on the API. There's a lot to handle to make this custom assistant experience. So today we're making that a lot easier with our new Assistance API. The Assistance API includes persistent threads, so they don't have to figure out how to deal with long conversation history, built-in retrieval, code interpreter, a working Python interpreter in a sandbox environment, and of course, the improved function calling that we talked about earlier. So that's all of OpenAI's newest announcement. If you want to stay longer, you can watch the demo of the Assistance API. It's amazing how easy it is to build AI agents. They actually have an amazing demo. Imagine I'm building Wanderlust, a travel app for global explorers, and this is the landing page. I've actually used GPT-4 to come up with these destination ideas, and these illustrations are generated programmatically using the new DALI 3 API. But let's enhance this app by adding a very simple assistant to it. This is the screen. We're going to come back to it in a second. First, I'm going to switch over to the new assistant's playground. Creating an assistant is easy. You just give it a name, some initial instructions, a model. In this case, I'll pick GPT-4 Turbo. And here, I'll also go ahead and select some tools. I'll turn on code interpreter and retrieval and save. And that's it. Our assistant is ready to go. Next, I can integrate with two new primitives of this assistant's API, threads and messages. Let's take a quick look at the code. The process here is very simple. For each new user, 
I will create a new thread. And as these users engage with their assistant, I will add their messages to these threads. Very simple. And then I can simply run the assistant at any time to stream the responses back to the app. So we can return to the app and try that in action. If I say, hey, let's go to Paris. All right, that's it. With just a few lines of code, users can now have a very specialized assistant right inside the app. And I'd like to highlight one of my favorite features here, function calling. If you have not used it yet, function calling is really powerful. And as Sam mentioned, we're taking it a step further today. It now guarantees the JSON output with no added latency, and you can invoke multiple functions at once for the first time. So here, if I carry on and say, hey, what are the top 10 things to do? We're gonna have the assistant respond to that again. And here, what's interesting is that the assistant knows about functions, including those to annotate the map that you see on the right. And so now all of these pins are dropping in real time here. And that integration allows our natural language interface to interact fluidly with components and features of our app. Let's talk about retrieval. And retrieval is about giving our assistant more knowledge beyond these immediate user messages. In fact, I got inspired and I already booked my tickets to, uh, to Paris. So I'm just gonna drag and drop here this PDF. What it's uploading, I can just sneak peek uh, at it. Very typical United flight ticket. And behind the scene here, what's happening is that retrieval is reading these files and boom, the information about this PDF appeared on the screen. And this is of course a very tiny PDF, but assistants can parse long form documents from extensive text to intricate product specs, depending on what you're building. In fact, I also booked an Airbnb, so I'm just gonna drag that over to the conversation as well. And by the way, we've heard from so many of you developers how hard that is to build yourself. You typically need to compute your embeddings, you need to set up chunking algorithm. Now all of that is taken care of. With every API call, you usually need to resend the entire conversation history, which means you know, setting up a key value store. That means like handling the context window, serializing messages and so forth. That complexity now completely goes away with this new stateful API. You can see the steps that the tools are taking right inside your developer dashboard. So here, if I go ahead and click on threads, this is the thread I believe we're currently working on. And see like these are all the steps including the functions being called with the right parameters and uh, the PDFs I've just uploaded. Code Interpreter is now available today in the API as well. That gives the AI the ability to write and execute code on the fly, but even generate files. If I say here, hey, we'll be four friends staying at this Airbnb, what's my share of it plus my flights? What's happening is that Code Interpreter noticed that it should write some code to answer this query. So now it's computing, you know, the number of days in Paris, the number of friends. It's also doing some exchange rate calculation behind the scene to get this answer for us. Imagine you're building a very complex like finance app that's crunching countless numbers, plotting charts. So really any task that you'd normally tackle with code, then Code Interpreter will work great for you. Here we've just seen how you can quickly create an assistant that manages state, leverages external tools, like, and finally invokes your own functions to make things happen. Kind of really open up the possibilities using function calling combined with our new modalities that we're launching today. While working on Dev Day, I built a small custom assistant that knows everything about this event. But instead of having a chat interface while running around all day today, I thought, why not use voice instead? On the right, you can see a very simple Swift app that takes microphone input. On the left, I'm actually gonna bring up my terminal log. Hey there, I'm on the keynote stage right now. Can you greet our attendees here at Dev Day? Hey everyone, welcome to Dev Day. It's awesome to have you all here. Let's make it an incredible day. I'm using Whisper to convert the voice inputs into tech, an assistant with GPT-4 Turbo, and finally the new TTS API to make it speak. Thanks to function calling, things get even more interesting when the assistant can connect to the internet and take real actions for users. Hey assistant, can you randomly select five Dev Day attendees here and give them $500 in OpenAI credits? Yes, checking the list of attendees. Done, I picked five Dev Day attendees and added $500 of API credits to their account. And that's it, a quick overview today of the new Assistance API combined with some of the new tools and modalities that we launched. I'm just gonna talk to my assistant one last time before I step off the stage. Hey assistant, can you actually give everyone here uh, in the audience $500 in OpenAI credits? Sounds great, let me go through everyone. Bro, everyone got free $500 OpenAI credits. Here's a summary of what They'll was gradually discussed. Be able to plan. We introduced GPTs, custom versions of ChatGPT that combine instructions, extended knowledge, and actions. We launched the Assistance API, 
to make it easier to build assistive experiences with your own apps. These are our first steps towards AI agents, and we'll be increasing their capabilities over time. We introduced a new GPT-4 Turbo model that delivers improved function calling, knowledge, lowered pricing, new modalities, and more. Thank you for watching. Editing the whole keynote took a lot of effort. I would love to hear your feedback. Feel free to like and subscribe. See you in the next weekly AI special.